What's going on everyone? This is Kunal. Many of you may have heard the term public blockchain or private blockchain or permissioned blockchain before, but may not know what it means. As a fan of Andreas Antonopoulos, I've heard him use the term permissionless blockchain before, but I haven't know, really known what it means. So I went out and I found what public blockchains and private blockchains mean. So in this video, I'll go over public blockchains and private blockchains, what they are, and examples of top projects that are working on, in both fields. So the first direction is what are types of blockchains? And this graphic right over here kind of gives a comparison to the internet in the 1990s when public blockchains was what the internet was in the 1990s and the private blockchain setup is like the intranet in the 1990s me meaning public blockchains are you know like bitcoin for example which is a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized trustless currency where anyone can put their miner onto the network and meanwhile you have private blockchains which would be like a company internal blockchain and i'll go over examples of that like ibm so they they make the argument each side makes the argument for for its case so first you have public blockchains so example would be proof of work protocol anyone like me like right over here i have my cc miner ready to go right i can open it up set put it set it to any algorithm i want this one's on crypto night trying to get on crypto night and i can mine any public blockchain on a proof of work alg algorithm so that's how you can just set up your own cc miner and you can be part of the network meaning you are since it is a public blockchain anyone with any sort of computational power and and any sort of software like a cc miner can get on the network now meanwhile you have federated blockchains or consortium blockchains which you know as opposed to public blockchains they don't allow any person with access to the internet to participate in the process of verifying transactions right so they're faster be partially because of this and the the real thing that gets into this is private blockchains so because there you need to have right permissions you that way it keeps centralized to one organization uh there is a trust based system because you need to get authorized to uh be able to verify transactions on this blockchain and its main use is for companies and then you go into classification schemes right so it, this really really this chart right here really lays it out simply for trying to define what what each type of blockchain is so public blockchain is open read write and the while the private federated blockchain would be permissioned read and or write speed uh, for the public will be slower uh, understood because of course more users it would be more resource intensive the entire blockchain network would be more resource intensive while the private federated blockchain would be faster uh security so you, you use the proof of work or proof of stake or other consensus mechanism versus private as we mentioned is pre-approved participants and then the identity is it's anonymous or pseudo anonymous and meanwhile private it's a trust based system you they it's it, they must know the identity of anyone who is verifying transactions on the network and finally asset is native asset versus private federated is any asset so now this next chart over here it takes the advantage it puts permission versus permission let up in each other and what's going on so permissioned is faster that's a key theme it is going to be faster because there are less people on it uh, so each transaction is going to go faster it's less of a bottleneck but it's managed upkeep versus permissionless which is a public ownership and then permissionless is also open and transparent permissioned is private and then we mentioned about trust versus trust free and again so on the public blockchain you have a non anonymity of validators so this is why uh, privacy coins are really, you know, the antithesis of, you know, a company like IBM doing its own public private blockchain and versus, you know, you see the permissioned, there is a trust in validators needed whenever you're dealing with a permissioned blockchain, there always will be. Uh, and you go through many stages like they're multi-signature, right? So 
many people heard of you know things multi-signature wallets and other things like that on to help protect uh funds right so permission because they want to protect their interests and their funds as much as possible they will use a multi-signature method and finally this chart over here just goes over you know participants right so permission you identify and trusted versus participants anonymous although it could be malicious and consensus mechanisms so proof for public blockchains is proof of work proof of stake versus for private blockchains it's you know some sort of inter internal voting right and that me and, and it has low energy and consumption but it also is less people transacting on the network and transactional transaction approval frequency uh is obviously short and but bitcoin it can take 10 minutes or more then blockchain implementation solutions so when you talk about IT services or blockchain first or development platforms, right? There are many different examples. Like Ethereum is def and Bitcoin are definitely better for just pure blockchain, pure decentralized, trustless, verification-based cryptocurrency. But, but but if you're talking about other use cases for blockchain, like development platforms or vertical solutions, there are different kinds of blockchains that are out there, especially many private blockchains like IBM working with Hyperledger. And finally, blockchain as a service. So this is where private blockchains can really come in handy. So uh, what happens is many companies, they don't want to create their own blockchain. Established companies like Microsoft are like, do I really want to create my own blockchain? Or I can, you know, work with a company like IBM and they can offer me blockchain as a service and then I can use it to for for my needs. And that's another reason for a private blockchain. It allows for a tailored needs in that way. So now let's talk about some of the consensus algorithms. We know about proof of work and proof of stake for public blockchains, but private blockchains, what are some of the algorithms they use? So they use Raft and Paxos. So there are other PBFT algorithms that can be used to reach consensus without proof of work mining. So let's look at the enterprise blockchains, right? They the advantages that they have is privacy. So using a permission blockchain allows only actors who have rights to view the transactions. Number two, scalability. Uh, so a permission blockchain can build a simplified proof of stake model to establish consensus. Number three, fine grained access control. So we've discussed access control before. And so here's one example of a, a, a private blockchain, right? So here we go. Hyperledger Fabric. It's the IBM blockchain, basically Apache Kafka Q service. So for those of you who don't know what Apache Kafka is, it's basically a uh, one way, one direction, you know, just a constant uh, stream of, of messages and, and a messaging kind of service, like a Q kind of service. So it's like, input in and input out there's no serious storage going on it's just input in input out it's kind of like an internet relay ch uh, chat irc and where they have modified the partitions each partition is an ordered immutable sequence of messages which are continuously appended they add some nodes to clean the inputs in viola blockchain right we should add that there are no blocks but batches of transactions are renamed to fit the hype better better since everything is written in one queue, at the end of the day, IBM offers the Bluemix cloud server priced at one hundred and twenty dollars per year to host the service. Smaller packages can do it for thirty dollars a year. So these kind of blockchains are forks of the original implementation, but deployed in a permissioned manner, R right? So many, but so what they're talking about here is like. The, the the some of these blockchains are exact replicas in terms of code of something like ethereum but they're in a private manner a perfect example of that is jp morgan chase's quorum right so here's jamie diamond out there bashing bitcoin all the time maybe he's kind of regretted it a little bit recently but you might ask what's the vested interest for him to bash bitcoin and the answer is he has his own private version of some of the top public blockchains that are out there so of course he may want to bash some of those public blockchains to get companies that would want to deal with him if he offers blockchain as a service to uh, to work with his blockchain instead of working with bitcoin or ethereum hmm 
But so JP Morgan Chase is considering making Quorum its blockchain and smart contracts platform into its own company. So that's what Quorum is. It's JP Morgan Chase's uh, same, same code as Ethereum, but it's a private blockchain. So only uh, people who are verified by JP Morgan Chase and trusted and their identity is given and, and everything else can uh, verify transactions on the network and build uh, applications on top of uh, JP Morgan Chase's Quorum blockchain. So that's public and private blockchain for you guys. Uh, I really hope you guys got something out of this. And please, uh, if you guys want something to add, please do do that. Um, you guys can visit us on altcoinbuzz.io where we have a podcast section. Uh, we have news and updates. We have some of the recent news coming out. And then uh, you, you can see right here, we have a Twitter as well where you guys can follow us. We're up to almost 77,000 followers at altcoinbuzz.io underscore io we also have all coin buzz ladies where you guys can follow they have a buzz underscore ladies where you guys can follow and finally last but not least please like this video and do subscribe if you wish to the all coin buzz channel where we're over 200,000 and counting thank you very much guys and have a great day